Hey everyone. Uh, hi, my name's James, and what you've been listening to there is uh, a prototype of a bass synthesizer that I've been working on. And this synth uses a combination of the CEM, Curtis Electro Music, or SEM, however you want to pronounce it, 3340 uh, oscillator chips, the AS3320, which is the remake of the uh, SEM3320 filter chip, um, as well as their AS3310 envelope generator and the um, Cool Audio V2164, which is the remake of the SSM2164 Quad VCA. Um, just to give you a, a quick bit of a guided tour before we talk through and I'll show you some of the, the features of the synth, um, on the workbench here, if we, um, let's just move the uh, uh, Spectrum Analyzer out of the way for now, um, and just give you a bit of a guided tour and, and pardon the sort of shaky camera work here, but we'll start off by taking a look at this side of the board here. Um, this is the, the digital section here. So we've got a STM32 microcontroller that's receiving the MIDI signals and is driving some uh, digital or analog converters with the green LEDs there, which are providing the uh, voltage per octave signal out to the oscillators. Those oscillators are down here on this breadboard here, and there is currently three voices built with a fourth one that I'm about to construct. And so there is, uh, these two here are the, the note voices, so the primary note voice and the secondary note voice. And they are the two CEM3340 uh, based oscillators. But these, the voice, each run of this breadboard here is a self-contained voice with an oscillator, filter, and VCA section. Um, and then on the far end of the board here, if we just sort of come around and take a look here, this is actually a sub-oscillator built using a clock divider uh, being fed off the primary note voice to generate a bit of uh, a sub bass um, underneath the main note voices. To add some character into the sound, we've got four VC a, uh, sorry, v a, VC ADSRs here, so voltage controlled envelope generators. They generate four independent envelopes. One is the main amplitude uh, for the note voice itself, um, the overall amplitude of the sound that you're hearing, and then the other three control um, the filter on the um, node voice in the sub bass uh, or sub oscillator and then also the resonance to give a bit more color as well also in this digital section here um, we've got on this uh, breakout board a uh, fv1 dsp fx board from spin semiconductors um, which we're using to give that uh, great reverb um, and the way i've wired it up as you might have heard during that auto audio demo allows for feedback to be created um, across that reverb signal path or that dsp signal path and then we have our final um, internal mixer here, which essentially mixes together the three voices, the two node voices and the sub oscillator to allow us to have control of dialing them in individually. Uh, so I'm gonna set the camera down somewhere that we can just get a pretty decent view of, of what's going on here on the board. That looks pretty good there. And I'm gonna give you just a quick sort of feature tour of, of what this synth can do. Um, so let me just get my notes here because what started off as a pretty simple project has blown out into uh, something I'm really quite proud of and I'm looking forward to, to turning into a, a product. Um, we'll just simplify things here. We're going to turn the reverb right down. So I'll play some notes as you can hear the changes here. So I'll turn the reverb down. So we're down to a totally dry signal. I'm going to dial back the envelope generators so that they're not coloring the note. And I'm also going to turn it up a little bit on the mixer because it tends to get a little bit quiet once you've turned all those things off. Um, and just make sure we turn all these envelope generators off. There we go, all four of them. Obviously, we leave on the, the main ADSR, which is you know, allows us to shape the note. So we can have a very short attack or a long attack. And we can also have the disdain, uh, decay and sustain, but we can also change the release to have super long release time. But let's just keep it super simple. The first thing to tell you about this synth is that it, it, uh, it's got those three different voices, which we can turn them on individually here. So I'm gonna turn off everything except the primary note voice and play that. Now the, the voice itself is actually two different waveforms being mixed together. And so for, for the two note voices, 
you can selectively choose whether you want square wave, um, sole wave, or actually a mixture of both. So let's just start off with one or the other. So we've got nothing here and I'll dial up one. That sounds to me like the sole and then the square. The square, of course, has pulse width modulation because what synth doesn't? And you can mix in both. So if we bring square down a little bit and then bring in some saw. adjust our pulse width a little bit. Here's a nice meaty sort of tone. The two node voices have um, a filter control that is shared, although they have separate filters, so they each sound a little bit different, but we can dial them in separately. So if I turn the resonance right the way down and then just bring up the filter on the node voices. That sounds like it's gone completely the other direction. What's happened here? There we go. So let's... Uh... I think I've got a bad connection here on one of the pots. This is the joys of building things on a breadboard. There is 10 different rows of a breadboard being reused here at the moment. Here we go. So let's bring those filters up on the main note voice. We also have a resonance control, which is again shared by the two voices. Self oscillate if you push it hard enough. You notice when the resonance gets turned up. Lose a bit of bass bottom end. So, this is why I built these with a sub oscillator as well. So, when we turn the sub in, all that bass that we lost in the resonance, it'll come right back in and it has its own filter control. Just see if we hear it without the sub oscillator in. I'm going to bring up the sub. It really adds a lot of warmth underneath that tone. Now, one of the other neat things we can do here is so there's the primary note voice, there is a uh, the sub oscillator. Then what we've also got is um, a second note voice, which allows us to have two voices running that we can detune off each other. So if I bring that in now. Here it's got a lot more stereo sort of width to it now. And we can f adjust the fine tuning on that so that we get more or less detuned. So let's just hit the fine tuning on that. See those two voices are now nicely tuned together. 
Let's do this more width. Like if we turn that second voice down and then bring it up. Still adding a lot more character to it. I'm just going to turn mix down a little bit so we're not clipping here. Hopefully, you can still hear that okay. Now, the ADSR, as I said, is a simple amp envelope ADSR, so not much to tell there. But the neat thing here is that. The other three envelope generators are each wired to, there's two wired to the filter cutoff on the note voices um, and the uh, and a separate one for the filter cutoff on the sub bass. But then there's also a resonance amp uh, envelope generator that's connected to the resonance on the note voices. So that allows us to do things like this. See how we can now get that that harder edge on the, the hit of the note because we're, we're actually quickly um, letting the filter open and then you pulling it shut um, as that envelope generator closes. We do the same with resonance if we want. envelope generator works on the sub oscillator and it allows it to have a almost like an organic uh, stringed instrument effect where the note will ring out and get um, will ring out and get quieter as uh, the more you let it run so if we turn off both of the note voices here so turn down back to a single note voice in the sub and now just the sub you know what difference this makes as I turn up this envelope generator that's affecting the filter cutoff on the sub. You know, it's allowing for that initial hit. And giving us that nice sort of slow ringing away of the note. voices. Now because you have separate filter controls on the uh, the note voices versus the sub, you could have the filter almost closed on the note voices while well, being still being affected by that envelope but then bring up the filter on the uh, sub which sub bass sound. So lots of possibilities there. Now, just moving the camera down a little bit further, because we've sort of gotten past the envelope generators um, and the uh, the oscillators, but then we get to this bit, which is where we've got this FV1 um, spin semiconductors FV1 uh, DSP chip in here. And the reason I chose that is because this chip has its own assembly language um, that you can write your own uh, digital effects with, whether it be a re reverb, a chorus, tremolo, whatever you want to do. You can you can do that. Um, and the idea with the synth would be that it would be possible for third party users to or the owners of the synth to write their own or choose from a bank of community effects that are already available or create new ones and upload those in to, to have more effects. 
Yeah. It's just a really cool little chip. The way I've wired it in is that there's a simple wet and dry here. gain to the signal coming back in. I'm loving how this is sounding. Um, the other neat thing I added in though was the ability to feed back on the signal that's coming out of the reverb. So. Very slowly here. Start to hear some more overtones coming in. I wanted that sort of you know guitar amp effect of when you really want a note. When you really want a note to ring out, that you can essentially have that sort of sound. Just getting the levels just a little bit. Now we're really starting to drive the reverb quite hard. So that's how it currently sounds. The other cool thing about this is by virtue of using all these different um, voltage controlled components, so the, including the um, the uh, FV, sorry, the, the uh, CM3320, the voltage controlled oscillator, the voltage controlled filter, the voltage controlled amplifier, the voltage controlled envelope generator, all of these are controlled by control voltages, as is their name, which means that um, this thing is going to be a uh, semi-modular beast. So the, the desktop version of it I am envisaging here will have a lot of patch points. So you'll be able to, you know, you could plug in a control voltage cable off, off some modular gear or some other source to modulate anything. So whether it be the mix of um, the square wave to the, um, to the sawtooth wave or whether it be the amount of envelope that was causing that sort of hit on the, the filter when you first hit the key or, or even just the pitch of the oscillators and, the way in which you can tune the different oscillators, that all of that will be will be exposed via voltage control points that will be normalized so the synth just works out of the box. Um, but uh, then if you want to get more advanced, you could dive right in and control every single one of these voltage control points. And there's a lot, like at the moment, this thing can, comprises of about, well, it's two uh, 3340 oscillators. It's six V2164 VCAs, so that's, it's 24 voltage controlled amplifier points right there that you could use different ways to modulate the volume of various signals and the mixes between them. Um, plus the four um, ADSR, so that is 16 different control voltage inputs there to control the attack, decay, sustain and release of four different envelopes. Um, just lots and lots and lots of possibilities, which I'm really excited with. Um, but the other thing that I wanna do here is to make sure that this is not just limited to people with modular gear, but to make sure that there's also a digital to analog converter that's driving uh, or has the ability to drive those as well. So that, um, you know, out of the out of the box, it will obviously support the basics of the MIDI you know, notes and velocity, and we'll do some interesting things with velocity controlling the, the amount of um, that's, that sort of envelope driven filter modulation that we were hearing there. So the harder you hit the key, the harder you get that initial hit on the note. But I also want to make sure that you could basically map a, a CC number or like a, a, a fader on a controller or 
um, you know, an automation lane in, in uh, Ableton or in your MPC Live or, a, you know, anything, basically. The, the point is anything that can be tro- controlled by a voltage within the unit or via a plugged-in semi-modular control voltage that's being supplied can also be manipulated via MIDI. So that's the goal here. Um, my aim was to create something that, um, first of all, sounds amazing out of the box. So I believe in building products that do one thing really well. And the one thing that I want this to do really well is to be an amazing sounding bass synthesizer. Um, and and then as part of that, the, the controls on the device will be relatively simple and, and will be um, quite opinionated in the way they work, as in it shouldn't be possible to, to turn things such that you, you don't get a sound or you get a sound that's really thin or, or not what you want not what you'd want out of a, a thick bass synthesizer. The idea is to, to make it an opinionated device that um, is designed for, for one thing, and that is to be a really great bass synthesizer, but then to allow for the extension of that beyond that, that simple control service or relatively simple control service, there'll still be a bunch of knobs, um, but to allow that, that extension of that by uh, either plugging in modular gear to provide those control voltages or using MIDI to, to map in um, you know, your, your faders and sliders on your favorite controller or your automation via a door or a uh, MPC workstation, whatever you want to do, All right? Lots of possibilities. Um, so I'm super excited about this. Um, the, the link uh, in the description below will show you where I stream updates pretty much daily as I'm building this up. Um, and w- w- as to where we're at right now, uh, if we just flip back to the workbench here and I'll, I'll just turn the mixer off to, to get the noise down, but so basically, the, the prototype itself spans these um, ten breadboard strips from the uh, you know the digital side of things here, accepting the MIDI, producing control voltages down to the oscillators, the um, envelope generation, and then the effects unit in the final mix. There, there's one more thing I want to do, which is this strip of chips here will become a noise generator, just to allow a little bit more character to be added into the voice. Then the gigantic job is um, to stitch this all together into a schematic that I can then uh, build a printed circuit board from. Uh, and work has begun on that. I've been, been trying to treat this in a, a modular sense, not modular as in modular synthesis, but um, modular as in, um, you know, I've built a schematic for the um, the voice board, that, that single strip on the breadboard that contains the, well, you can see it here on the screen, the, the oscillator, the filter, uh, and then the amplifier section. So that'll be one schematic and I can build that onto one board. Um, then we'll do a separate schematic for the envelope generators and then a separate one for the mix and then a separate one for the effects board. And so my hope here is to create sort of a couple of different building blocks, physical PCB building blocks that I can then sit on the main board that brings it all together uh, combined with a control board. Anyway, getting way ahead of myself here. The point was I just wanted to introduce you to this project. Um, and to uh, to let you have a chance of hearing it, and I'd, uh, I'd love to get feedback on it. Uh, and if you're interested in tracking the progress on this, uh, please check out the Twitch link below or subscribe to me on YouTube. Um, Twitch gets pretty much a daily stream of just updates and, and chat as I'm building this up, um, and YouTube gets the, the real sort of in-progress demos as we go. So thanks again. Uh, my name's James. Uh, it's been a pleasure to talk to you, and uh, look forward to giving you more updates on this great project really soon. See you later. Bye.